Welcome to Empowering Chats with Susan Burrell. This is where we have deep, intimate conversations about self-empowerment and future existence. I am an intuitive healer and a light leader who has been called to activate other light leaders. So I'm curious, are you one of them? So by listening, lean in and see if you are ready to be that eternal potential you've been called to be. Using your bravery, your talents, your tenacity, can you be innovative and adventurous in order to activate your life and lead from that place? This is where we learn how to love ourselves from the inside out and love the whole world over and over again. Enjoy the show. Wow, everybody. 2024, we are now in the month of April, the beautiful month of April, the springtime month of April. And I can't believe how fast this year is going. I say that every year, I think. I don't know. We'll have to listen to the old shows and see if I say it every year. But under the theme of Be Potential for 2024, the month of April is O. And we chose, our, my team and I chose observant observant. And then other words were openness, overflowing opportunity. So let me just tell you what observant means. It means quick to notice or perceive, regard attentively, watchful, discerning, mindful, perceptive, contemplating, clear-sighted. It also means following or adhering to a particular law custom or religious ritual observant now i saw it as being the observer of your world of your inner world as well as the outer world and therefore being open to seeing what is going on within you and feeling out what the opportunity is of that inner vision that inner observer and allow all of those insights to overflow into your daily life, into your life experience. So that to me is being observant. Now, this adhering to or following a particular custom, that might be a little antiquated. Check in with yourself and see, are you adhering to an old belief system or an ideology that really isn't serving your life purpose, your soul mission, observe that, right? Be open to see if there's larger opportunities or potentiality for you in being observant. I'm just saying, check it out. Observant for the month of April. Enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm really excited to have this conversation because it, it, this is a, a beautiful, intuitive woman that I got to interview a couple years ago when her first book came out. Um, and I'm so excited because she's got another one, another book. And the book is called The Illumination Codes, uh, Seven Keys to Unlock Your Quantum Intelligence. I want to welcome Kim Chesney. Kim, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me back, Susan. It's so great to see you and be here. I, I you know, it, I remember last time we just had a really fun, raucous conversation. Yeah. So I have no <laughs> doubt this will be that way. Um, so, but first, I want to ask you um, what led you to, okay, first, even before that, Kim, this book, you guys, this book is chock full of information um about quantum intelligence and how we can utilize that to really get back into that uh what i call the divine intuition that we may have forgotten and she, and kim has um exercises and labs in it that you know if you haven't ever really explored your intuition it's such a great resource kim it's just i love the way you set it up so i want to get that out of the way a little <laughs> little goo on you. So let's talk about um, what are the codes? You said that in the book, you say there's seven codes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, um, so I set the book up. So it, 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 it's more like there's seven keys uh, to unlocking these codes, right? So the idea is what is the illumination code to begin with? So um, when, after my first book that, you know, well, actually my second book, you guys talked about with radical intuition, so many people were really starting to experience their intuition in these profound ways. I kept getting this question, but like, how does it actually work? How is it possible, right? I have a knowingness. I, I have this inner wisdom, but like, is it magic? Is there spirits like whispering in my ear? Like what's really going on, right? So that was sort of uh, the impetus that drove me to research this book. And I ended up working uh, with physicists and learning from some really leading edge um, scientists who have been focusing on the intersection of uh, physics and consciousness. And one of the things that uh, is very popular is this notion of the non-local field. And mm -hmm. this is sort of one of the things we never understood before the quantum revolution, that there's an invisible field of energy, information, light that connects all of us. It's an, it, We can't see it or sense it, but it's there and we sense it on an intuitive level, right? So the existence of this non-local field also in some places called the Akashic field, right? So you can see where that's going if you've ever studied the Akashic records, is that it holds all the memory of the universe. Everything that's ever happened, will happen, is happening right now, is stored in this ever-present non-local field that's accessible by our intuition. So the idea that this, all of this is, in life is infused with this code, this illuminating code of information, light, energy, that can be read by one thing, and that's our intuition. Mm -hmm. We can't understand it with our thinking mind. We can't access it through that sort of linear thought process. We have to open up and receive it through our intuitive pathways. So the idea that um, there is this illuminating code, aka our inner wisdom, accessible all around us, uh, was something so fascinating to me. So I came up with these I, th this sort of system, this seven-step system, where you can use these keys to unlock different aspects of this code and receive information about your life, inner guidance, inner wisdom, all of that really exciting, magical stuff that reminds us that there's so much more going on in life than we realize. Oh my God. You know, I, I so appreciate you, Kim. I so, I really, I so appreciate you. I appreciate that you put all this information into one place where people who haven't explored this yes. can, um, because now's the time. Yes. Now is the time, everybody. Now is the time. If you are not um, connected to your inner source of wisdom, which is your intuition, if you if you don't even understand what we're talking about right now, this is the book for you to explore. I'm telling you. So I want to read something from, from the book, okay? This is um, in the field of intrinsic awareness, which you were really just talking about. Mm -hmm. um, you say there is an invisible field that connects everything in the world to everything else, linking every bit of information in the universe with every other bit of information. For millennia, mystics have been seeking it and scientists have been theorizing about it. But you go on to talk about the non-local field, the field of it's a, the field of energy and consciousness that exists beyond the boundaries of space and time. Everybody, I well. I'll just be straight up, Kim. I'm I'm experiencing shifts of space, mm -hmm. time, dimensions. I'm, I, you know, when it first started happening a couple of years ago, I was like, okay, I, I you know, and I can't, I felt like I couldn't tell anybody about it because right. what am I nuts? So <laughs> it's it it is definitely um, universal consciousness that we're moving or becoming even more aware of when we take time to open our intuition and listen, right? Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah. And I, that's why I say that the new frontier is the inner frontier. It's, it's the shift in understanding that's going to come from within us and we can go into outer space all we want, land on the moon or wherever, but the real the magic that's going to happen with humanity is going to happen when we look inside ourselves and realize what we're really capable of. We have this whole untapped potential that lies uh, with our intuition. And then we're just scratching the surface of it. And this book, it's very simple. It doesn't have a lot of heavy quantum theory. You don't have to be a scientist to read it. It's an everyday person's guide uh, to understanding these. There are very complex ideas, but boiled down into something that makes sense in our everyday life. Yeah. So when we start learning and living by and experiencing these things, like quantum events, how do they show up in our life personally as personal experiences, right? Once we explore that, then we start to see that, wow, 
we are capable of so much more than we realize. Yeah. And it's so, it's so fun that you're on, that you're on empowering chats, because that is the theme of 2024 for empowering chats is to be potential to really realize our full potential and live it, um, really live it. So let's talk about, um, Oh, well, this is silly. This is silly, but I just, I just wanted to pop this in, in the book, you were talking about, um, like how people sync up, like when you go shopping and then all of a sudden everybody's getting, there's nobody in line and everybody's getting in line at the same time. You're like, well, wait a minute. I, I, so I have my story about that kind of a thing, Kim, is I wander into, I have a lot of, I love shopping locally. So I'll wander into stores and there's nobody in there but the owner. And I always, I always know that the minute I step foot into someone's seemingly empty store, people come in to buy. It it, has happened so many times. So I, because I um, intuitively lead from a sense of opulence. And so I, I, I begin putting that beacon out there. Right. And so people come in and then they're buying. And I, I feel so good when I leave because I know that that was, you know, that something opened up because I have that awareness, that in, intuition, yeah. that is what happens when I shop. So I, that's, that's a small story. I just wanted to share it. No, I love that, you know, the everyday th- mundane things like shopping can become infused with these magical experiences. And that's really the, the nature of the book is showing that how these very simple things can be infused with this sort of uh, intelligence from the part of us that knows everything. Exactly. And this is the thing that I love about um, the quantum theories is because there it, it because we have access, like you just said, to everything. There is there isn't like, and maybe there might be a learning curve for some people, but there there really doesn't have to be as long as you open up, right? Exactly, exactly. And then it's it's innate for all people. And it's something that we all have a potential for as long as with, and it's, see, it's with, with, you know, a regular thinking mind, we have to go to school, we've got to learn to use it, and we have to, you know, know the linear systems. But the intuition on the sort of other side of our mind is it's the exact opposite. It's simple. All we have to do is open up to receive and then, and then recognize that, pay attention, be observant, mm-hmm. and honor that that comes through. It's much and easier than thinking. <laughs> and, and one of the things you talk about and I think you have a lab about it is about creating spaciousness. Yes. Spaciousness. And, and I know, let's see, I might have to roll my shoulders. Kim. Yes. Right. Cause I, I'm one of those people that chalk so many to do things in that um, when lockdown happened, I really stepped back. I stepped back. I stepped off of the merry-go-round and my process was about creating spaciousness so I could listen. So, so how do you, how do you, so tell everybody how ways that they can create spaciousness when everybody feels like they're running for their lives. Yeah. Well, one of, one of the great ways to start as we were chatting earlier is step back a little from social media. (laughs) That's a good place to start. Uh, Right. Cause that's just social media is really exemplary of the din of noise and friction and all of this stuff that surrounds us every day that we really don't need in our life. Like using social media mindfully, like there's nothing wrong with social media, but you know, setting your boundaries, using it in a way that it, that it is additive to your life and that you're not sort of, you know, dealing with the struggles that are involved with it is, is, is an actually today a really important part because years ago we had much more spaciousness, you know, we would, we would spend our days working in the fields or hunting or whatever we were doing and then we were there in that moment in this place in time and now we have think of all the things we have to do you know we have all of we have jobs we have to like take care of each other we have all these aspirations we have all these goals and we're so busy and we're running around that we forget to be still and listen so the whole mindfulness movement I, I talk about this in radical intuition too is crucial for setting up for an age of intuition. In my mind, it was really laying the groundwork, everything that the world has come to understand and accept about mindfulness for this next step of moving into insightfulness. Because once we're still, once we're present, 
once we're in the moment, that's where the silence speaks. Our intuition speaks. That's how we can hear the voice of our inner guidance and the cosmos and the universe guiding us. We can't hear it when we're running around like maniacs all the time, right? We have to be calm and quiet and just open up to, to listen. Mm -hmm. And you've got, some, again, some practices in the book um, that I think guide people into doing that if, if if they don't know how. It's it's just wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah. So and 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 there's something also about um being in spaciousness can also maybe for some people equate to emptiness or empty space mm -hmm. and yet that's also uh important for the um quantum field to be able to be activated or excited as as you, you mentioned in the yes, book the biggest thing that the the quantum field understanding that there's this unified non-local field around around us one of the biggest things it teaches us is that space isn't empty it's full of information it's full of wisdom it's full of guidance all that stuff is stored in what appears to be empty space and in the silence between our thoughts it's rich with intuitive uh accessed information so when you're meditating um one of the practices that we use in Intuition Lab, my Intuition Development School, is insight meditation. And this is a form of meditation that goes back very far in, in, in Buddhist culture even. And it's really this act of being still and not, you know, it's not as much like Zen where you're sort of just quieting the mind and 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 that's really your main goal. Insight meditation is what once we've reached the the stillness is opening up to what falls in from it. So you have very rich meditations full of ideas. You, you get ins inspiration, you get uh, solutions to your problems. All these things can flow in, in that sort of insight stillness. So it's not something that's boring. It's not something that's quiet, so to speak, in terms of nothingness, right? It's, it's rich with, with the little nuggets of information and wisdom that are meant to transform us and help us to get to the next place in our life. Yeah. Yeah. I I've been talking a lot about soul growth and evolution and in my personal growth and experience it, it sitting and, and listening and allowing that intuitive voice, if you will, is, is vital for the soul growth. And, and, and in fact, it, when people are in conflict, like I just had a conflict in my family and instead of, well, I reacted, but also I had to slow down, right? I had to drop in and go, really, what is this about? Because mm -hmm. it's not about what I think. And this is happening, I think, for so many people. It's not the thing that's outside of us that really is happening. It's the, it's the information that that thing is bringing us into awareness of. Yes. Right. Yeah. So you, you can have those really strong reactions, but that's the thing when you, when you shift into the intuitive zone, you take that pause, right? You take that pause, breathe through it, drop into it and get into your intuition. Your intuition will show you how um, the higher meaning, the higher purpose, purpose of it all, right? Because intuition and emotion, they're, they're two sort of different things. Uh, intuition is emotive. It, it moves us, right? And it guides us. But when we're in a state of emotion or getting riled up, like that's coming coming from another place. Right. Intuition comes from peace and power, and that's what I love about it. It's that beautiful sort of uh, synergy of the peace and the power all in one. You feel the strength and the knowingness and the inner sense of of oneness. But at the same time, you know, it's it's accompanied by a sense of peace and quiet with our emotions. Right? Yeah, so it's it's beautiful that way. You know, I appreciate you saying that, Kim, because it, it um, so many people nowadays, maybe this has been, you know, for eternity, but at least, you know, lately people are in reaction. They're in high volatile um, stress states and emotional states. And so it, 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 it makes it really really challenging to hear intuitively what what is needed to you we need to know absolutely because we're coming from ego that's the thing everybody's got their own little worlds and it's me and this is offending me and this is 
doesn't, I don't, I don't agree with this, right? So we're all in this place of me instead of this collective place of we, right? Yeah. And that is what is the beginning of all this conflict is, is instead of looking at the world as a binary place of us and them, we want to look at it as a unified place where we're all manifestations of the same source and we all really are connected in one and intuition takes us back to that because that's if you follow your intuition far enough it goes to that place of unity love uh oneness all of that stuff that's what's on the other end of our intuition yes i totally agree and if you follow it uh enough you can go back to initiating uh causes in your life, but also in your, in your ancestry, um, in your, in, in past lives that are the initiating cause that haven't been resolved yet. And yes. intuition can guide us into how we resolve those things. Right. Yeah. And I love that you brought up past lives because that's something that's really important, even though technically there's no real such thing as time. You know, that's one thing you know, we understand from quantum physics that we are living as uh, single points uh, of relativity. So things appear to be the past and things appear to be the future. But in reality, everything that's happening is happening in the now, the ever present now. And that doesn't mean that life is predestined because there are alternate realities based on all the different potential choices that we make. So we live in this beautiful mix of, potentiality, but also on some level of this knowingness of what's happening on a greater scale outside of this moment in this place in time. So working with our intuition, having it, it explains how we can access things like past lives, other lives, um, remote viewing, how we can access other places. These are all very real documented experiences that, you know, you can look back and there's cases upon cases of past life evidence we find past life evidence all the time in the work that we're doing at Intuition Lab. You can see it out there in scientific studies have, have come up. There was Ohm Seti. Her story is an amazing story if you haven't heard that. I talk about it a little bit in the book too. Um, and the same with remote viewing. The US government, the governments all over the world used remote viewing. Uh, and they've for, for millions of dollars and decades of research they put into it because it was working. <laughs> you don't do stuff like that unless it's working. So now you understand how we can do it because they have this field uh, that's accessible for our intuition, despite space, despite time, all of that information is out there. We just have to tap into it. Right. Right. And this is, um, this is so ancient. All of this yeah. that, that we're talking about it, pre dates or pre seeds where we have been in the last 100, 150 years, where science really became this hardened, um, I say hardened, uh, I'm sure scientists would uh, argue with that, but um, it, it, it became a, okay, for me, I can only talk about me, Kim. Science ha is something that professes to know, right? It's mm -hmm. a scientific fact. Yes. But what we're talking about in terms of intuition and that ancient, the access to everything is ancient. Mm -hmm. So science is really kind of a new little fluff ball, really, that that yeah. that wants to strut around and say, I know, I know. Yes. But yeah, that's not necessarily so. Exactly. Because I feel like we are on the tail end of an unbalanced sort of dynamic in our mind, right? So we've, oh, yeah. we've got materialism, we have intellectualism, we have technology, and we've just become so mind heavy that we have forgotten about this, really our first thinking, our first intelligence that, that we were much more in tune with uh, in ancient times. And now it's time for a rebalancing. It, it's great to be smart. Smart, being smart is great. We wanna, we, yay mind, right? I'm not like saying one's better than the other, but it's time to use this other side of our brain, which is really where the genius is, the magic is, that you are, all of this stuff is powerful. And we've we've had it suppressed for so long. It's the feminine side too, right? It's also our feminine side, the receptive side, right? We don't go out there and like figure it out and, you know, learn things. We just, we just relax and receive, right? It's the yin energy with, with in, intuition. So it's really time for a rebalancing of all of those things that have been repressed in our culture and society. I, I, I'm like, 
I like that you're saying rebalancing because I think there are people that are like, well, let's just cut off that arm, you know? Right. Let's just, right. and that's linear thinking also. That's that's right. like the us against them thing. Yeah, um, we both. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So in, and in your book, you've got in uh, the chapter meta reality, you've got a list of meta reality, which is the quantum layer and binary reality. And it's, it was really cool for me to just go through that list and go, oh yeah, yes, no. And some of the stuff that's in the binary for me, it's like, wow, you really need the first one. You really need the meta reality yes. to create your reality your right. you actually are exactly and that's what's something we don't really think about because we just take for granted that we're living in a material world which now we understand there really is no such thing as a material world the matter is just another densification of energy and an illusion of maya but what you know when the big bang happened we went from being a ground state of a zero to a to a manifested state of a zero plus one so everything in this creative world is something and something else, right? We had the original zero, which was the something, the oneness, the consciousness, the God being, you know, whatever your religious beliefs are. And then something was created. So we have the thing and then we have the other thing. And so that's the world we live in, the worlds of ones and zeros. And we see it reflected in our computers that we program. And that's why it gets really exciting with com computing, because then you start talking about quantum computing. And now it's not just ones and zeros anymore. It's like a whole nother thing. But when we recognize that this world is a binary world, we understand that that's why duality is implicit in so many ways. But the key to the real reconciliation and evolving is, is bringing that duality together, and becoming whole again, instead of becoming these two opposite sides that keep, you know, sort of having this tension between them. Right. Okay. So you just like kind of like went into this with, <laughs> with, 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 with mathematics and which is also pointing to sacred geometry, right? Yes, absolutely. Fractals. All of that is so key more than we realize, right? Math is this underneath everything. So this is one of the things that really blew my mind reading. Um, uh, Jude Curvin is a wonderful author, Irvin Laszlo, wonderful author that uh, real scientists that, you know, that I, that have influenced me and have done the work and really, really like fully understand um, this concept in ways that, you know, everyday folks like you and me probably don't grasp, but understanding that when we break down matter, right, this is really key is, is that this things that seem hard, like our bodies or like actual physical are really just, you know, made up of what, molecules and then atoms and then particles and if you keep breaking it down well what's inside of an atom first of all mostly empty space we've realized carl sagan said that there's so much space between these particles it's unbelievable so so really it's just a sense of relativity that makes it feel hard but even more so these particles are made up of these of when you get very far down into it the most fundamental thing that the world is made of and this is something that is so powerful for intuition we now understand it's made of information mm. so get down to the very bottom it's made of information that's carried in the light and this is the idea behind the holographic universe and why we have access to all the information everywhere that we can because all of it's stored in this holographic light universe so it's really fascinating okay so again when i when i was years ago when the idea of the holographic was coming into my awareness it was again like a dimensional yes shift for me because really where is it right? right um and that all that information and co-creation yes like you talk about the magic and the creation of is is can be all in that and we have access when we can learn how to utilize it um but the other thing for me, Kim, is that this whole math thing, um, I, cause I can feel my mind going zzz, 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 and you brought in the light, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so this illumination code That's where the title comes in. Yes. Thank you. That's right. It's light. It's yes. Light. It's and there's our inner light, right? Right. And the coding is, um, because there's a lot of individuals on the planet right now that are receiving light codes. Yes. 
I, it, it sounds like it might, they might be more, I was thinking it is all new information, but it sounds like it might be just turning on the old systems in that, like in that. the body or, or the mind or where, wherever, where are they, Kim? Where do they come from? Yeah, no, I, no, I like that. I, they're, they're within us and they're around us. They're interpenetrated with us. That's the reality of it, right? So, so they, there's no real inside and outside, but these codes can be anywhere. They're everywhere, right? So it's not like you have to go sit on top of a mountain or anything to access your intuition. So think about it. If the fundamental uh, source of the building blocks of the universe is information, well, what does your, what does your intuition do? right? It processes information, guidance, wisdom. So it's such a beautiful power thing, powerful thing when you recognize the role of intuition is to touch in to this very primordial and sacred source of our universe and that we have access to so much wisdom there. And so the big question that I get, um, I'm going to jump ahead on you because, because this is one I know that people are thinking is, well, if that's the case, why don't we just know everything, right? Like, right? Like, why don't we just, why can't we just know every little thing? Um, well, first of all, our minds, our brains are not designed to process that much information, right? Our, our brains are like a reduction valve. We can only take so much. So there's no way we could actually conceive of all of that with our little small human brains. Maybe eventually as we start to evolve, we're going to start to perceive more and more of that, right? We've seen our brains enlarging and progressing, uh, throughout the the eons so that's not out of the question for us as we grow and evolve but right now we sort of have a limit but even more so than that we tend to be able to uh interact with things that we're entangled with so i talk a little bit about entanglement in the book right and that's the idea that particles that we've have a, a mental or an emotional connection a heart connection a mind connection with people situations um pets even, um, we can communicate with them across this interconnected field of everything because we're entangled with them energetically, right? So science has found that this happens with particles. If two particles are united and they separate them and put them on opposite sides of the earth, they still mimic each other's spin. They still stay connected. So the same applies for us human beings. You just use a dog and their owner. That's a great example. Dogs, how many people have had dogs that just sit by the door like five minutes before their owner gets home? There's no way they could know that their right. owner was home, but those dog, my dog does it every day. And it's just this great little simple example of entanglement. You think of your mom and she calls you on the phone like two minutes later. Entanglement. We're all entangled in so many different ways. And it manifests as things like telepathy and empathy and all kinds of really cool intuitive stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, and I want to invite people as you're listening to uh, this conversation, check in with yourself. Where are you um, actually getting information that maybe you, you're not a, paying attention to, you know, it's important to be very observant as we're moving forward in this next um, experience of humanity. And, and um, because you, you may, I'm just asking everybody, Pay attention. You may be getting information besides the tingle before somebody calls you on the phone. You may begin to start to hear what it is you're supposed to do next or who is going to say what to you that you need to process. That yeah, it's happening so, for a lot of people. And, right. And we can choose what we entangle with or disentangle with, right? Mm. And you have old stuff that you don't, that you're carrying around old feelings, old sort of resentments, things like that. If we harbor those things, we still stay entangled with people. That's why they say, oh, you know, forgiveness is such a wonderful spiritual awakening process. It's not because it's for the other person. It's because that you disentangle with someone when you forgive them and you no longer have those kind of influences, which can be very subtle. And right. So we want to keep our energy space clean. We want to uh, fill our heart with good energy and loving relationships because that, and you know, it's law of attraction is tied in with that as well. So, um, so it, that's a really good point. It's a really, you know, sort of do that, uh, self-check-in every once in a while through journaling or whatever, uh, even some insight card practice, something to help you really check in and make sure that you're entangled with the, the things you want to be entangled with. Right. And, and now's the time to get rid of the garbage guys. It's, it's Bump just it time and so so i want to add hold on um oh so what about okay now i'm just poking the bear maybe what about um the people 
who are harboring hate, mm. you know, because some people that are so um, hate, anger, fear, and they can't lift themselves out because they haven't been paying attention to their intuition. They haven't been listening within. What could you say to them? Yeah. I mean, it's a really tough, um, it's a tough subject to address because a lot of times people who are in that state of mind don't want to have that healing. They don't want to reconcile. And I, but I do think it really comes back to um, a fear, right? If you're a fear of your self-preservation, you're afraid of for your own survival on some emotional level, physical level, whatever it is. Um, and until we really address those fears, until people feel safe in their environment, um, we're going to be having people deal with these external situations. If we create a world where everyone is taken care of, everyone can live their truth without a judgment or persecution, everyone can self-actualize. When we create a world like that, then people are going to be less afraid and less likely to turn against each other. But when we're struggling for resources and when we're struggling to say, no, it's okay who I am, right? Well, someone else thinks it's not okay who I am, but we have to realize there are all different ways that we're all hu different human beings that are manifesting in so many different ways. And just because someone's different than us doesn't mean it's bad. It's great to have variety, right? You know, that's, yes. that's what's so beautiful. Of Variety is the spice of life, all different kinds of people and expression. And until we recognize that, and that there's a place for everyone, we're going to be stuck in these ego battles, which are really detrimental for all of us. Oh, yeah. And, and I was having... I was having, this is why this came up, Kim. I was having um, lunch with a dear, dear friend of mine and she, her husband is, you know, hitting 70, I guess. And he's got regrets and he has anger about things that in his twenties and thirties didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And now the people that he was entangled with are physically not on the planet. You know, right. I kind of think they're still entangled, but <laughs> yes, so that he, happens. He's got this rage addiction, this anger addiction from what didn't get accomplished or manifested in his youth. And it's eking out on her. And, and you know, it's just it, it's just oozing. And she's she's getting exhausted by trying to listen, help or, or whatever they're doing, you know, so. What would you say to somebody like that? Oh, I know people like that, too. <laughs> yes. Um. I think that the, the core problem with situations like that is that uh, the inability really to live in the present moment and uh -huh. there's still right this um, connection with the past, which yeah. doesn't exist anymore. And, uh, you know, if you can't let go of that and you're still clinging to that past, you're not going to find the freedom that's offered in this present moment, which is just this where you are. Right. And, and for me, I have a terrible memory and I always say it's, it's a blessing because I forget about all the mean things people did to me. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, whatever. Like, because it's good because then I don't, I don't drag that around and I don't let it bring me down as much as I could, you know, yeah. we all do that to a degree. Cause I mean, it's life and life is rough sometimes, but really, um, you know, finding our, for our own selves is that commitment to live in the moment and understand the past is not really part of our life at all, unless we want it to be. And just focus on the spaciousness and then all the wonderful things that are around us and the potential that's opening up right in front yes. of us. And, and opening up within that, it, that is, um, like, it just feels like everything, Kim, is multiplying. And, and because it's uncomfortable for some people, because they're not used to experiencing this um, intuitive multiplication thing, mm -hmm. um, they, they don't know how to handle it. But that's why I just am in love with this book, because you give people tools in this book, the, the illumination code. You guys, there's so many tools if you just work through it. And it's, it's not really a book to crack open in the middle. I don't think. I agree. And thank you for bringing that up because I have had people ask me that like, Oh, can I just start anywhere? And I'm like, if you are intuitively called to start anywhere, by all means, follow your intuition. But I recommend starting the beginning. And if, you know, if there's some things that you, you want to like the lab skip over or whatever, but really at least reading the sort of nuts and bolts, because I do present it 
in a way that, you know, each chapter builds upon itself in terms of, you know, what is the long, non-local field? Then what is meta-reality? And then, you know, these really uh, foundational principles that by the end, we're using them all. And if you kind of jumped right to the end of the book, you might not grasp really what some of those things are. I, I completely agree, having read a lot of it, most of it. And then you, then you also are skipping over some other uh, of these labs that you've put in that become, uh, like I'm looking at... Um, a daily insight log, my intuitive downloads. I mean, that's, that is such a useful tool yes. for people because again, they have to observe what, it, what is happening. They have to really be with themselves and, and in logging it, they become even more aware of what they're listening to. Right. Exactly. And, and that's why I, I created these labs is really, so this is a, this is a doing book. It's not just a reading book, right? Cause with intuition, it's great to read about these things, but you don't really get the magic until you experience for yourself. You know yeah. how that is, right? When you have those magic moments and you have those moments of insight, you know, that's when the, you're really moved and like, yes, like I, I know there's something really important happening here. So I wanted to create a framework for people to not only learn these things, but then to actually get evidence and experience these so-called impossible things in their own life every day. So creating an insight log doing these labs, there's, there's over 30 different practices and exercises in this book uh, to start really witnessing the magic in your own life, which is really, this is your quantum dimension. I mean, this is all of the stuff that we're talking about with intuition is our quantum dimension. In the old days, it was supernatural. It was called a cult because no one understood what quantum physics was. We only yeah. knew quantum physics, right? But now we know, and this is this whole part of us that was just relegated to uh the, the nether worlds because we didn't realize it was science, but it is science. So now we can say, okay, it's not something crazy anymore. This is real. And now let's learn how to use it. And when you see it happening, it blows your mind. It's amazing what, what, what's possible with the intuitive mind. It really is. Absolutely. Absolutely. A hundred percent. So Kim Chesney, you have something that you call intuition lab. Yeah. And tell people just a little bit about it and how they can get there because you have gifts and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, all kind of fun stuff. If you want to get started trying out your intuition, getting into a, a daily routine, I designed and created my own insight card deck and I have a free online deck that you can uh, practice with there. And you can pull a card every day, practice with your intuition, learn how your higher self is speaking to you. And we have all kinds of classes and workshops to really help you to develop your intuition. And we work with other people. One of the great things about intuition is group workshops are great because you can get practice with others and get validation. And it's a really wonderful way to um, really start having that accountability to observe your intuition and start making it a part of your daily life. And and I'm telling you, you know, the the kind of guidance uh, that, that comes through when you really start paying attention to your intuition every day is, you know, it, it changes your life. Yes. And and it and I said it earlier, but now is the time. It's very important as we're moving into this next era. Um, at, well, we're, we just stepped into it of, you know, the age of Aquarius is really important, everybody, to really, really um, become aware and listen deeply because we are going to be co-creating a new world, a new earth, you know, and, and it's important. And a new mind. <laughs> a new mind. And all of us need to be aware and connected that we all get to participate. Yeah. Yes. So absolutely. the so the uh web the website is in intuition dash lab dot com, right? Yep. Yep. And, and, and Kim Chesney at Kim Chesney dot com too. I have insight cards at both places for free. There's also uh you can take a quiz and find out what your intuitive type is, uh your intuition infinity and all kinds of other uh fun engaging intuition exercises. And I love that you've got the cards. I pull cards. I love because that is, uh, that is you're guided to what you need to hear or know. Exactly. Cause a part of you knows everything, right? And a part of you knows what card to pull. <laughs> and a part I of love that. I it. love that. Kim Chesney. Thank you. I'm getting, I'm getting all this beautiful energy. Thank you so much for love being it. exactly who wow. you are and following your uh, soul mission 
as as we all begin to really connect intuitively. Thank you. Thank you so much. You guys, the, the book is called The Illumination Code, Seven Keys to Unlock Your Quantum Intelligence. And I feel like this book gives you a quantum leap. <laughs> yes, I'd love that. I hope so. That is my wish. Rediscover the magic and wonder of life. Yep. Yep. Why not? So thank you again. I, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me and for all the work you do too, Susan. Oh, you're welcome. So I'm just going to end with, and so it is, namaste. Well, that wraps up our empowering chat for the day. I hope you enjoyed it and found it inspired you to be more empowered. If you want to find out more about me, go to susanburrell.com, my website, and you can see what we're up to. I am teaching classes again. So there's a calendar of that and you can register. Uh, you can check out my book, Live an Empowered Life, a 30-day journey with the companion inspiration cards, or you can access my guided meditations that go through Insight Timer. We got a bunch of stuff on the website, check it out. And until then, namaste.